Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about drawing, specifically as it relates to executing drawings for your finished painting. And I'm going to draw on a piece of paper today that is the same size as my canvas. I typically start my painting journey doing studies. And so this is a typical size for me. This is six by eight inches. And this is the wood panel canvas that I'll ultimately paint on. So now, sometimes I will draw right on my uh, canvas, or in this case, canvas panel. But today I'm going to draw on just a piece of paper, and I'll transfer the drawing later. I do both, and I'm comfortable interchanging either one of them. And I'm going to show you both so you can um, decide which one works best for you. So three of the main things about drawing I'm going to talk about today are three things that will help your accuracy. And they are diagrammatic lines or the grid, something called the unit, which is a proportionate um, uh, tool, and shape. Diagrammatic lines, the unit, and shape. When I talk about shape, I'm talking about positive and negative shapes. And I'll get to each one of those as, uh, as my demonstration proceeds. So for our purposes, I just want to remind you that the first four lines of every painting are already there. They are the top, the bottom, and the two sides. This is my picture plane. And within my picture plane, I have um, put my diagrammatic lines, also known as a grid. But diagrammatic lines are much more than just simply a grid. Diagrammatic lines are a series of vertical and horizontal lines that help us find accuracy in our drawings. Um, not only in the transfer of our drawings, but in measurements, which I'll make clear to you later as the drawing uh, progresses. Diagrammatic lines also include finding diagonal lines. If you can tell time, you can get any diagonal line fairly accurately. Uh, so let's begin. Um, so for my diagrammatic line, I use a very simple grid, which is a cross, a diagrammatic line or a vertical line right down the middle and a horizontal line right down the middle as well. I think in terms of halves, but I also think in terms of quarters, so you cut the halves in half. Um, I was a mural painter at one point. Th this would be the uh, quarter point right here. And so just for the sake of this, I'll just kind of draw that in just so you can get an idea. So you can use whatever kind of grid is going to help you. You know, if you're just starting out, you don't feel comfortable with your drawing, then um, it's perfectly fine to make a very extensive grid more than just my cross. When I was a mural painter, we would we would do one inch squares for a drawing. So this would have, you know, if this is six by eight, I would have six six down and eight across. Um, and okay, so um, I'm going to uh, split my screen so you can see the drawing uh, or the photo reference that I'm drawing from. And um, that way you can see the grid overlaid and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So. This helps me find the placement of things. Now, typically when I do a drawing in a field or from a photo, if it's a landscape, typically the first line I will draw in is the horizon line. Now, in this one, you can see that my horizon line is right in the middle. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't that one of the rules that is, uh, isn't that one of the rules? Don't put your horizon line in the middle. Yes, it is. Learn the rules so you can break them. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. Now, I have a very good reason for this. Now, if you're going to put a horizon line in the middle, um, you have to have tensions elsewhere in the painting to pull your eye in and around the composition. I'm going to put another strong horizontal here, and I'm finding the location of the, uh, the grass line just below that house. I like to have strong horizontals or something that's called high readers. So if you squint your eyes and you see the most obvious shapes or lines, I put those in first. And those help me find other lines. For example, in this painting uh, or reference, my focal point is going to be this house. 
So in order to find the top of the, the house, I, I want to find the top, the bottom, and the two sides of the house, its placement, and its accurate placement. It's important to get the first thing accurate so that you can get the second thing accurate, because a lot of these measurements and um, observation is based on um, relationships. You know, you have to get one thing right in order to get the second thing right. So to find the top of the roof, if you look at, um, we know it's, uh, it is in this half, right? But if I split this half in half, I see that the top of the roof is approximately right here. Slightly to the left of the quarter point, and slightly above the quarter point here, right? So I find it like a like a target, boom. And I can find the width of the house. Um, I can find it. if I draw a straight line here, I can see that the the uh, roof line comes down to here, and. If I draw a straight line down here, I can see that the roof, the other roof line comes down to here. And I'm just sort of connecting them. So these are diagrammatic lines. They're little guides to help find the placement of things, you know, how wide that roof is. Um, and finding the bottom of that uh, building, I see that it's just below the halfway point here. So it's somewhere in there. That look about right. That looks good. So now I will use something called a unit. The unit is simply a proportional measurement. A unit helps you find the width versus the height of things. Um, in my house here, I see that the, um, hmm, oddly, the house is approximately the same width as the, it's about as tall as it is wide, approximately. That looks pretty good. So in figure drawing, if you've ever done figure drawing before, the unit is a pretty common practice. Um, so if you had a figure model sitting or standing before you, a typical practice would be to take a measurement of the head with the top of the pencil at the top of the sitter's head, and you would put your thumb at the sitter's chin, and that would be considered one head. And so you would say the figure is, and you would count, the figure is one, two, three, so on, so many heads high. Well, in the absence of a figure, we just we have something called a unit. We take a random measurement of something. In this case, it is going to be the height of the roof. If I flip it on its side, I can see that the building is as wide as it is tall. So you would say that this building is one unit wide and one unit tall. And a unit is a, um, is a device that I use throughout the entire painting. For example, I can tell you that there is... Um, there is a bush right here to the left of the house, right? And if I take a measurement, I, can, I know that that bush to the left of the house is a little bit shorter than the unit. So I take a unit of measurement. There's my unit. Flip it on its side. Boom. And I'm one of these guys. I'm not looking for um, architectural accuracy. You know, I'm not going to break out a ruler and measure things. Um... I'd rather, I'd rather do it by eyeball and just keep it more organic and um, and not have it so perfect. You know, I want to I be somewhat loose. I'm, I'm really, I'm not really looking for an incredibly accurate drawing. I want it to be somewhat loose. Anyway, another thing I notice is that this bush touches the house approximately halfway up the side of the house. So this is a diagrammatic line, isn't it? So I can make a, a, a very light horizontal line in the middle of the house, and that is a diagrammatic line. And I'm asking myself, what intersects with that horizontal line? And so the top of that bush happens to intersect with the top of that line. If I keep that line going, that horizontal line, that horizontal diagrammatic line, it cuts the uh, house in half, I can see that 
it also touches the top of that little, um, I don't know what this is, like a little shack or something. You see that? So diagrammatic lines, they're just, they're tools to help us find the placement and accuracy of the accurate placement of things. Okay, so moving right along. I can see that the bush on the right side of the house also comes right about in the middle. Then it goes up and it goes up to the roof line, right? If I was to draw another, another diagrammatic line, this piece comes up to the roof line. That kind of does that. All right. So we use these tools to find our place. I'm finding the top of the grass now. And the tops of these grasses, it's organic, so it's not straight, but I do think in terms of straight and uh, vertical and horizontal lines, they can help you find um, things that are diagonal. And I'm gonna show you in a second how we find really, really accurate diagonals. You can see that the grass gets smaller right at the halfway point there. But once I'm confident with these loose lines, I'm keeping the lines pretty light right now. Once I'm confident with those, I, I'll, I'll, I'll simply darken them in. Okay, so now there is a, um, there's a distant headland back here, a row of trees. And you can see that the row of trees touches the house where the where the rooftop touches the side of the house right there. You see that? I don't like that. It makes a little tangent. I'm going to draw it in anyway, and I'll fix it later. And if I find the um, the top of the, that distant headland, if I draw, draw a diagrammatic line right here, I can see that that's where the top of that distant headland is, right about here. You can actually find the very top. Right here is the top, here and here. So that helps me find this little arch. If I know it touches here and the top of it is here, I know it sort of arcs that way. It looks like the back of a whale, right? And it comes down here and right above here, it comes up again. There's a little tree over here a pow, something like that. Somewhere in here, about the halfway point between these, this quarter, there's like a, a hole in the trees, a little sky hole there. There are more distant trees back here. You can see them barely. I don't like the placement of those. That's it. Just seems uh, that's, that's this makes a tangent right there. So I'm going to change that. Um, I, I like the fact that it overlaps, but I'm going to change that. Okay. All right. Good. I like these lines. This is um, nice, simple shapes. Um, I think that's what attracted me to this was. The, the symmetry of all of this. <clears throat> Everything looks carefully measured, but I, I've, got a, I've got a plan for this painting. We are poets, not reporters, right? So we don't have to, we don't have to paint everything that we see. You know, we change things, we add things, we subtract things, we leave out. So um, diagonals, diagrammatic lines also include accurate diagonals. So if you want to get the accurate pitch of this roof, then you take a measurement of the actual roof itself and you compare it, right? So if you take a measurement, if you hold your tool up to the roof, you can see that it points to, um, what we'll say, like 11 o'clock. And this points to somewhere between 1 and 2 o'clock. So if you can tell time, you can find 
pretty much perfect, perfectly accurate um, diagonals. Another trick is to use this, is to use your um, view catcher. And you can take a measurement of your roof in nature and then bring it back and check there. Okay, so there's also the business of shape. So there's certainly positive shape, like the, the shape of this house is a, um, the outline of this house is a positive shape, right? But negative shapes are just as important if you are interested in getting accuracy. What negative shapes are is what's left behind. For example, look at the negative shape right here on the roof, right? It makes a very specific V like that. And so you, you look at your reference, specifically in this area. So your eye look at your reference and then let it bounce back over here at your drawing. And you want to make sure that V, you are seeing that V. Um, I'll point out some other interesting negative shapes. So right here at the bottom of this roof line, look at this abstract puzzle shape here. I'll, I'll kind of draw it out. Where it meets the trees, it kind of does that. So it helps me find that. It's a, it shows me like a little error in my original drawing, right? This, this comes in a little more. So it helps to get shapes a little more accurate. So using a combination of the unit units of measurement, diagrammatic lines, and negative and positive shapes, you can get extremely accurate. Depends on how much time and how loose or tight you want to be. I'm really not just interested in, in doing really tight drawings in the beginning. I like to start looser and get tighter as the drawing progresses. Um, for the sake of this and explaining all of these devices, it certainly helps to uh, to be a little tight, right? Um, but that's just that's just in the interest of educating. Okay, so here's a, here's a pitch right here. And so what we do is we would take a measurement of the actual pitch of the roof and then take it over to our drawing and compare it. Yes, and mine looks like it points just south of 9 o'clock, right? There's 9 o'clock, so it's just south of 9 o'clock. That looks pretty good. I think this is just like a little shed or something like that. And I can see from the negative shape that there is more negative shape here than there is below it. So that, that that's helpful, right? I'm using a kneaded eraser and charcoal, by the way. This charcoal pencil is a 4B. It gets a nice, rich, dark line. So if I was to draw a diagrammatic line from the top of this all the way across, it comes in the middle there of the house, as we said before. So let's see. Some terrific shapes in this painting, or this reference.
one of the things I like about this particular image is the atmospheric perspective on this, on these trees. There's a quietness to uh, to this. There's a silence in fog and mist, I think, you know. And um, that's sort of one of the things that appeal to me. I'm going to bring that a little higher here. I, I, I can see in the photo reference that this these distant trees they touch right there. That just makes a tangent. You don't want a tangent. A tangent is one of those spots that stops your eye. So I'd rather have it overlap. If you have an opportunity to overlap, take it. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. And just kind of make it up. Okay. All right, there you go. So starting with the large masses, I mean, th this, um, starting with the large masses helps you find the smaller ones first. So if you squint your eyes, really, there's one large dark or mid-tone mass here, and then a, uh, a light tone in the sky, and the darkest dark is really the this little shape here that is the... If you, again, squinting your eyes, it includes the bushes, the house, and this shape here. Those are your darks. Everything else is mid-tone and then lights. So the Papa Bear, or the largest ratio, or the largest mass, value mass, would be the mid-tones. Followed by the light, and then the smaller degree, uh, the Baby Bear, would be the darks. Um, there's some minor shapes in here. And again, they're um, they're much easier to find once you have the larger shapes in there. I'm doing this for you. I I, I probably wouldn't do this, the small detail stuff, um, in my uh, drawing at this point because I I you don't know I like to leave I don't like to get too tight in the beginning. But I know when I first started out, this was a really helpful guide to get accurate drawings. So, by all means, be as accurate or as loose as you're comfortable with, okay? I can see that the top of the door is between where this bush and the top of the house is. So it's right about here, right? Does that look right? It's slightly, only slightly wider than the window above it. And these windows, to me, this is, looks a little busy. I don't know if I'm going to keep these in the painting. These three shapes here, the door and the two windows, looks a little busy to me. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, this reference, this photo reference, has a symmetry in it that appeals to me. Um, there's a lot of shapes that are, it just looks like carefully measured, you know? Um all the shapes in here and there's a there's a there's an odd quiet control when you have measured shapes and there's something about the atmosphere in this that seems to be in keeping with that it seems like there's a there's a stillness in the atmosphere honestly i, I just can't wait to paint these trees <laughs> Because they're atmospheric and and um, that's kind of what interested me in this. That feel of definitive foreground, middle ground, and background. Uh, I don't believe this. I'm going to raise this and then I think I will go to ink. Yeah, let's raise that a little bit. Okay, that feels better. Okay. All right. 
So there's my drawing. And one last thing is, uh, my vision for this is, even though they're not in the photo, uh, there were some birds that flew by. And I liked all this stillness juxtaposed by this idea of some birds coming down, right? The, the, sh the shapes in here, we have a horizontal impl implied by the horizontal line. And these the axis of the these masses are horizontal. The house is a vertical. We have another small vertical here. And there's a nice arch to this. But I want a... Um, I want the birds to sort of have this counter arch coming this way, right? So I'm going to put some small bird shapes. I don't know yet. I'll, I'll, I'll work that out later on in paint. But I want them flying behind the house and overlapping. Um, and I think the juxtaposition between these small shapes and all these larger masses will be interesting. Okay. raising my horizon line just a little bit. This mass feels too large. I mean, I did make it larger so it wouldn't touch there, but I don't want it to feel that large. I want it to feel like it's in the background. Okay. All right, once I'm satisfied with the drawing, and I am, by the way, I'm satisfied with this um, for my painting. I, again, I'm not looking for incredible accuracy. Um, then I am ready to ink. So if this were on my um, my canvas, I would I'd draw in charcoal because it's easy to erase. And then I use one of these. This is a uh, Pigma brush or a Pigma ink pen. It's a disposable India ink pen. It's archival, rich black India ink. And this one happens to have like a paintbrush nib on it. And this one's pretty old. And you'll see how, how loose I am. I mean, I'm really not... I'm not looking for uh, deadpan accuracy here, right? There was a time where I did. But I'll let that come in the drawing later. I mean, I'll let that come in the painting. The degree of um, realism or whatever, you know relative looseness versus tightness. For the horizon line, I may give it one of these. Why not? Right? Pow. All right. Keep it fair. And yeah, we'll put some birds in there, whatever. <laughs> Little shapes. Okay, there you go. Um, I also have a number five. Uh, it's just a, a pen nib on this one, and I might just do some of the um, smaller linear architectural 
drawing in here. Uh, that one's dying, whatever. Okay. I guess not. Okay. I buy these in art catalogs, so you can get them at dickblick.com, Jerry's Adorama, that kind of thing. Um, I think Michael sells them, too. <sighs> okay. Okay, so there you go. Um, so this one I will transfer onto my canvas, and I will show you how to do that. 